In 1935, the retirement age was 65 and life expectancy was only 69. It was the beginning of the big short. The program was designed hoping to pay out as little as possible. You were supposed to die, people, but you guys refused and kept on living. And then you even demanded to be paid out. Do you see the rub in the system here? What's up? My name is Sean. And I am Arlington. Today we are talking about retirement at 65, fact or fiction. Come on, Sean. We're young men. We're in the prime of our lives. Why did you feel it was important for us to do a show on retirement at 65? I feel it's important to talk about retirement at 65 because I believe it's fiction. With the government clearly letting us know all the time that it cannot support an aging population, and with all these advances in medicine, it's, we're living beyond you know times of what we were living 100 years ago. And this 65 retirement has been around for 100 years. So things need to change, need to upgrade. We need to let our audience know that you need to plan from an early age that you're going to live and work beyond 65 years of age. So like Sean says, it looks like we're all going to live well into our early 100 and something. And we're going to have to be prepared. So sit back, because on this show, we're getting into retirement at 65. Is it fact or fiction? What do you need to do? What do you need to know? How can you plan? Where do you need to stash the money? Matt, can you make us some money with this next commercial break? Well, you're in luck, Arlington. This next sponsor is all about helping you with your money. It's Clean. Clean is a financial literacy program designed to educate youth in a fun and interactive way through class lessons, workshops, and web seminars. To bring it to a school or organization near you, please visit www.financiallyclean.com. Dion, the lady with the facts, give us a little something on the history of retirement. Well, sure, Arlington. According to economist Frank Ike, the concept of pensions dates as far back as 13 BC. However, it was the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck in 1883 that introduced the idea of the modern pension by offering the first government-run financial support for elderly. But it was in 1875 here in America, uh, it was American Express who actually offered the first employer-provided my retirement plan. My former company, American Express, my. Yeah, they who were one of the... the American Express? Um... And during that time, there was actually quite a bit of a discussion that was sparked in the 1900s around the retirement age. There was a time, of course, when, you know, the economy was dominated by farmers and eventually those farms were replaced by factories. So there became some skeptics along the way whether or not old folks could understand and work the new machines. And what was the age it concluded at? Dion? That's like you and a computer, Sean. Yeah. What, what was the age it concluded at? Have you seen Sean in Excel? <laughs> what was the age it concluded at? So I'll, I'll tell you. So it was actually William Osler, the co-founder of John Hopkins Hospital, that declared in 1905 the uselessness of men older than 60, Sean. Wow. He said that they should leave the workforce. So Arlington, you're almost useless. <laughs> <laughs> then it was 30 years later, thanks to Franklin D. Roosevelt, he actually is the one that created Social Security and established the normal retirement age of 65. So the thinking, as you had mentioned earlier, Arlington, was that people wouldn't live that long, much longer after retirement. So they thought. Wow, that is incredible. And it's interesting because that leads us to the problem we have today. Because people are living how long, Dion? Average 79 years old. So there you have it. The program was hoping we'd be dead 10 years earlier than we are today. So how the heck would they have enough money to pay out for all these retirees, especially with the baby boomer generation being, you know, half the world's darn population? Right. Well, as Dion mentioned, the initial plan of this was not to pay people out or have a minimum amount of people that would actually get paid out. I mean, that gets into the conversation today. I mean, I think this whole Social Security plan and retirement plan, is it needs to be upgraded. I mean, it's been around. It's been the same thing now for going into almost, we're getting close to the 100-year mark, right? We're at 80-something yeah. years. And, and it's the same principles as it, as it was 80 years ago. And life has changed so much. I mean, I think it's ridiculous. I know, for example, um, my, my brother's mother, you know, people may not understand what that term means, but... <laughs> for Don't those worry, Bridget, do, I understand. My brother's mother, <laughs> yes, we have different mothers from... A, um, his mother unfortunately passed away m- months before she got her first Social Security check. Actually, 
after we buried her is when they ma- mailed her first social security check. And the sad thing about wow. it, none of us could have cashed it because she was unmarried and, you know, her children weren't entitled to it. And she put 30 years at the same job as at a hotel and to put all that money in social security and none of it, not one check came back to her is a, is a tragedy, you know? Right. But you now that we've researched this, this, that was the, that was a thought process that right. these people are going to die and we'll never have to pay out the insurance plan. And with that being the plan, we have too many people, we have too little money, people are going to need to start to fend for themselves, essentially, right? And that's, I, I believe that's the mindset you should have. Like, you should be, you should be able to, you should learn to leverage your retirement and, and use it in a way to help propel you while still have the mindset of saving for a rainy day. Well, just a fact on that, Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies survey found that 51% of full-time and part-time workers plan to keep working past retirement. I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. I think retirement at 65 should not be looked at as quitting work, but as a new midlife time. Yeah, I said midlife. Right. 65 is a new midlife for me. And it should be looked at as, as a career shift. Your easy, your, easy, your years should be focused on, you know, first, rather than the money, position yourself to a career that you can enjoy while earning income and enjoy the pleasures and of life and stimulate yourself. You know, I don't think you should be at 65 packing it in and, and reading Reader's Digest. You know, you should be more looking forward to taking a next chapter in your life. But the reality is you can't afford to do that. Like we just literally as Americans, you can't afford to pack it in. I think that's that's a myth that's just beginning, that's becoming debunked each and every year. Well, that was actually where I was going to jump in, Arlington, because uh, in that same report, uh, 61% of those who did respond are citing that they need that income just to meet their health care needs, which is really their right. top concern. Yeah. What about the fact that retirement, Dion, what's the average amount of money people get for retirement each month? Um, on average, it's from 300 to dollars $695 um, per month. Damn. Yeah, and that's really Damn, if, that's, that's if you have um, savings. So uh, someone with $104,000 between the age of 55 and 64, you're on that lower end of 310. And those wow. have about $148,000, um, they're bringing home about $649. But at the end of the day, that's, when you talk to researchers like Anthony Webb, it's not enough. Right. It's not enough. Yeah, how could you live off of 665 a month? Even if you're eating cat food, you're not going to make it. You know, I believe regardless, even how, even if you're 64 right now and you're and you unfortunately haven't saved for retirement, you have to start being strategic in your thinking. You know, people put a lot of reliance on government programs, Social Security as their ticket to freedom when they get to a certain age. But you can't have those dependencies because I know we'll talk about it later in the show, but there's a, so many uncertainties as to what the state of government conditions will be during that time. Social Security, right. Sean, just so you know, still remains the fundamental part of most Americans' retirement. And that's crazy. I mean, the gov- yeah. from the time I was a kid, the government has been saying, we don't have enough money to support the baby boomers. We're running out of money. We don't have enough. And people are still sitting there, oh, it's going to be okay for me when I get to 65. Or they're just not thinking about it. That to right. me is ludicrous. That's what I think. It's like your mom and dad telling you every day, son... You're on your own when you get to 21. Son, you're on your own when you get to 21. You're just sitting there <laughs> thinking like, oh, they're going to buy me a house. They're going to buy me a Lamborghini. They're going to find me a right. job. I'm good. That's it. So it seems like America, open up your ears. Everybody's telling you it's not going to be here. But what will be here is Matt. And Matt is going to get our audience prepared for our next sponsored break. Thanks, Arlington. Starting a new business or growing an existing one requires someone who understands how to build brands. LIC Marketing Group will take the time to listen to your specific needs and help you achieve your business goals. With over 15 years' experience in branding and marketing, your company will be given the tools necessary to be recognized and grow in a challenging environment. Services include logos, websites, packaging, brand identity systems, marketing campaigns, and social media strategy. Call 718 932-6367 932-6367 or visit licmarketing.com and click on Portfolio to see our award-winning designs. Don't wait any longer. Get started promoting your business today. Welcome back to Two Black Guys with Good Credit. Sean, I'm going to go to the mailbag. We have Charles in New York. He's 52 years old. He has no retirement savings and he wants to know what can he do now? 
Charles is probably like half the American population at his age. And, you know, depending, I'm going to assume that Charles is working for a company, right? And they have benefits. Okay. These are my assumptions. If they have okay. benefits, Charles needs to call his organization right away and say, I want to max out my retirement savings. He may say to himself, oh, I can't afford to do that at this time, but you will learn to live without. He needs to max out his 401k savings and make sure that he, he makes sure that in a short period of time, he's contributing as much as he can towards his 401k. And then I would also okay, say hold that on real to minimize quick, just to- the type of risk he's going to take within his 401k because he doesn't want to put it all in and then lose it all. Okay, let's just let's just let's just clarify for everyone that may not know. Give me a quick and I mean quick explanation Are you of Bolt 401k quick or like a uh, like a, a long distance. Usain right? Bolt. Give me Usain Bolt quick explanation of a 401k. 401k is a retirement plan in which your your company sponsored retirement plan that allows you to contribute towards your retirement and it's tax deferred pay, it's tax deferred contribution. So meaning you're not paying the taxes now, but you could possibly be paying it when you withdraw the money at fifty nine and a half. Okay, and so your your suggestion to Charles is that he get on that program right away and max it out. Yeah, because to me, there's company matching programs. And what usually happens is that for every dollar you put in, the, the company will match it by a certain percentage. And if it's up to 20%, which they've been, some match 100% matching, 20% matching, like 20%, it's a 20% return on your dollar. So every dollar you put in, you get a dollar twenty. There's not a, you're beating, right. you're beating Wall Street at that point. Wall Street only has a rate of return around 6 to 7%. So, okay. I mean, as long as you outperform Wall Street, you're in a good investment. And don't take a lot of risk right. because you're already getting a, a good match on your return. Right. Now, let's say Charles has a job that doesn't have a 401k. What's his options then? He needs to contribute to his own IRA. And Hold up. What's an IRA? Retire- individual retirement account. He needs, to, he needs to open one and then make contributions to that. Where do you open one? Oh, you can go to any bank can do that for you oh okay okay so what do you so what what's your suggestion to charles he opens up an ira an individual retirement account and starts saving towards his retirement and also look at strategic other ways in which to save for his retirement i don't know what is if he has a current if he has did he say he has no savings or he has little savings what is he he's got nothing right now he has no retirement savings but maybe he has other savings he has to look okay. at his financial situation. What does he have asset-wise? Does he own a home? If he owns a home, he wants to make sure that if he's pulled out equity or maxed it out, he needs to stop withdrawing money from it. He wants to see if there's any equity in his home that he can that he can put towards his retirement. There's things that we're going to get into later on, I know, in the show, reverse mortgages and so forth that we can talk about as far as his options right. is concerned. Is there a cap for what you can put in an IRA every year? Yeah, I think it's $5,500 a year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But just to just to kind of jump in here, just to give you an idea, though, the median amount in a four hundred one k plan for most individuals, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute, is eighteen thousand dollars. Whoa. Forty percent. Eighteen. One eight four three three to be exact, and wow. almost forty percent of employees have less than ten percent. Wow. So we Come need on, to get people. on it. We need to start earlier and get on it. Max it out. Wow, that is crazy. With souls and you know. With them saying Social Security is only going to have money until 2033, having 18K in the bank on average, it's, it's going to be real lean come 2034. So, Sean, what do, you, what do you think? What do you think are some of the challenges to the current system? Well, I'm looking from an individual perspective, and the greatest challenge is we're, we're living longer. We're not able to support the, the aging population. You know, that's what right. we talked about earlier. And hence why retirement age needs to be adjusted. Back to the show, is retirement at 65, is it fact or fiction? It's fiction. I mean, it needs an adjustment factor for the higher life expectancy. And now the mindset that we are going to have to pay out on these Social Security programs. No, I was just going to say, something else that I found quite, quite interesting in terms of a, tr- a trend and why I think not enough people are participating um, in even 401k plans, they're saying that the employees who do participate tend to be better paid since right. they can afford to defer income more easily, right, according to the GAO. Um, they found that most of the people that contributed as much as they were allowed 
tended to have an income hovering around one hundred twenty six thousand. Good lord! No, I don't want to sound like the devil's advocate, and I don't want to sound I don't I don't want America hating me. But you know, I just believe that we can all adjust. I know somebody can say, "Well, I I max out. I have to pay this. I have to pay that." We can find adjustments in our lifestyle that can accommodate us saving towards a retirement plan. And I've talked to hundreds of people in all different income brackets. And when we really get down to the nitty gritty of them, there is ways in which we can find savings and we can adjust. And we have to. You have to look out for yourself first. So you're telling people to budget. Yeah, and telling them to budget. I mean, what happens with when I've told people in the past, hey, go to work tomorrow and max out your retirement contribution. They're like, oh, it can't be. The first couple paychecks, you hate me. You absolutely hate me. You're cursing my name every time your pay stuff (laughs) comes to you. But... After a while, you'd be surprised how you adjust and how you make tr- changes in your lifestyle to accommodate it. Yeah, but what, how, how does that work? Like, based on the stat that Dion just gave us, and it just seems like this is a reoccurring theme on our show. It always seems that people with lower income are always getting the boots, right? It just they, They're just always getting the boots. So how do you tell a person who's making under 35000 a year that he's got to tighten his belt to save for Social Security. I was that person making under $35,000 a year. And that's, was. When I, and, I, and that's when I was told to max out my retirement. I met a gentleman just arbitrarily, waiting on you, actually, to be honest with you. I was waiting on you to show up at an event. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> What's new? And you were late. And I was just easy, talking easy. to an older gentleman. And I asked him a question. Okay, I always, you always, old people like always, older people, elderly people always like to tell younger people what to do. And I said, what would you do different? And he made it clear he would max out his retirement because people at his age now are retired with huge savings and he has nothing and he's still working. And I said to him, well, I can't afford it. I'm only making $30,000 a year. He said, you will learn to live without. I said, I can't afford it. Listen, young man, you will learn to live without. And I can't reemphasize the fact that you will learn to live without. You'll make the adjustments. Yeah, but if you have kids, you have a home, you have a car, you have insurance, you have dental, you have clothes, food, like it starts to get the bottom line of what I'm saying is it starts to get lean. It does. It but starts to really I mean, get lean. I don't want to spend a whole show on budgeting because that should be another show. But there is adjustments right. that can be made in every scenario. But the bottom line is you have to learn to live without and you have to make sacrifices for yourself. Yeah. And we really do. There's a third of Americans out there that have no type of retirement at all. Well, let's look at this. Most people don't have any retirement because they haven't saved. We're talking about pushing the age. Sean is saying what we need to do is adjust the age. But as it stands right now, most people are only receiving 75% of the funds in our gen. And what I'm saying, as we move forward, we're more likely to only receive 75% of the funds we paid into the system. So what would happen if the age gets pushed out, people are paying in less, we have more people to cover, how much do you actually expect to receive, and will that be enough to cover you? My theory is expect nothing, appreciate everything. So you have to have a mindset that that you're not going to have any Social Security coming your way. Not to say that you won't, but you got to have that mindset. You know what? I can't rely on this check. And if it comes to you, it's like a bonus check. Don't worry about what the government is doing, all the fluctuations in the government, worrying about what you need to do to adjust yourself and make your, make your, your senior years you know, affordable. Okay, here's my question. Is a 401k and an IRA, will it guarantee me the, the payout that I'm looking for down the road if I get involved with that? You hear the silence? Or could it be compromised by interest rates? Is there anything that can compromise that payout, the amount of payout? Did you hear my silence? (laughs) Oh, I thought that was... Was my response to you a guarantee? No. There are no guarantees in life. So there could be... There could change a 401k or the IRA. I don't want to sound like a pessimist, but... We things that you have no control over, you can't worry. You got to focus on what you control within your world. And what you control within your world is preparing your own retirement. You know, preparing your own future. It may be in the fact that you know, hey, when I retire at sixty-five, I'm living in Manhattan. The cost of living may be high. I may need to think about other places to live at sixty-five. That's going to make it more affordable for me. Or in your case, right. I'm living, you know, on the hills of Malibu, watching the ocean break every morning. 
Maybe when I'm 65, I, ha- make, I may have to make a life adjustment. And I'm not sitting here saying that life is easy. Life is life is hard. And we got to but we got to look at these challenges and we got to make the changes and the sacrifice that's necessary. In 2011, almost half of working Americans were not offered a retirement account. So there was the guarantee at one time. There were the days where they were guaranteed a, a pension plan at work. So that boom. You know, that is it. That's Dion huge. has hit you know, it. Now everything is really on the individual exactly. to make the effort to create, to create, a, create retirement. a retirement. The message is on the it, wall. The writing is on the wall. Like one thing I don't do, and I don't try to fight or change system. I just try to find the opportunities and work within. Like the messages are there. We're sending the message out. The government's sending the messages out to everyone. Take control of your own destiny. Build for yourself. Yeah. And we're being yeah, forced but, to, I guess, is also what this, you know, what these stats are showing. Yeah, but do you think companies should play a role in here? Like, should companies be allowed to no longer offer offer pensions and retirement? People get involved plans in these, what to their companies employees? Should do and what they shouldn't do. Like, they're not social enterprises for the most part. They're for profit companies. Yes, they have a social responsibility. I do, I do believe that to a certain extent. But you know, people work for these companies. They think they're they're part of some fraternity. They're, you're not part of a fraternity. You're working for these companies. You're you're getting a paycheck, and at the end of the day. And they don't owe you as much as you think they owe you. Just prepare and plan for yourself. That's the best win. Well, they, you know, just citing their main reason for moving away from retirement pension plans is because the 401ks cost so much. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I'm saying, like, do these things. Do the 401k. Do the IRA. Put into your Social Security. But still, you know, control your own destiny. When you contribute to a 401k, don't get suckered in into doing these risky investments because then you might wind up with nothing. Well, listen, the Bernie Sanders in me says, I don't know if it's fair for American companies to (laughs) shed their responsibility to their employer, but I will say it's time to go to break. Matt, take us away. Thank you, Arlington. This sponsorship break is brought to you by Canvas Malibu. Canvas Malibu is a boutique and contemporary art gallery located in Malibu, California. At Canvas Malibu, it starts with art, and their curated offering of shoes, apparel, accessories, and art are a definite must-see. Canvas Malibu is located in the Malibu Country Mart, or online at canvasmalibu.com. NickNightDirect.com is a fast, easy way to shop online. To buy an item from any U.S. website, just go to NickNightDirect.com. That's N-I-C-N-A-T Direct.com. Choose your method of payment and we'll ship, handle duties, and deliver your item straight to your door. I'm Sean of NickNightDirect.com and you have my word. Sean, let's head to the mailbag. We have Sarah from Des Moines. She says she has been making her yearly contributions to Social Security and is afraid the program may disappear. What should or can she do to be covered down the road? What are your suggestions? Well, we talked a little about this in our previous sections. Um, You know, one thing you should look at if she has the company has a 401k, make sure she's maxing out her contributions to her 401k. Like I said, learn to live without. If they don't have a 401k, then she needs to start her own IRA up and make sure she makes her contributions. And within the IRA, she can have two forms of IRA. There's a Roth IRA and there's a traditional IRA. Both you can contribute up to $5,500 a year and it's deductible. At the up until the age of fifty, over fifty, you can contribute an additional thousand. So you can contribute up to sixty five hundred dollars every year. And what that means okay. is that your income is reduced by that contribution amount, and you're only taxed on the the difference. At seventy five okay. and a half, you can no longer contribute Arlington, and you can withdraw before the ages of fifty nine and a half. And if you withdraw before the age of fifty nine and a half, you're going to pay a ten percent penalty. A um, few exceptions you can withdraw for medical expenses, education, first time home buyer. And you can withdraw up to ten thousand dollars. Now, here's the thing that I that I do that you know it only is those for the discipline and know yourself first before I tell you this thing. Okay. Okay. What is it? Know yourself first, audience. Know yourself first. But if you have an IRA and you have a balance and you need you know short term emergency money, you can do once a year. You can do it. It's called an indirect rollover, where it allows you to roll money out. And, and once in a calendar year, at, at any amount you want, and as long as you roll it back in within 60 days, you're not taxed right. on it. You don't even have to report it to the government. 
All right. And is that truly any amount or is that any amount? amount? I've used it uh, plenty of times to when I need to borrow money or need I have an investment I need to get into. I'll pull it out of my IRA and I'll roll it back within 60 days. So it's a great once again, it's another it's an interest free short term loan if you need it at that given time. Right. Right. People don't use it. People don't think of how they can leverage. Like that's why I say all the time with an IRA. It's an active tool that you can leverage and use to your advantage. Right. But I'm saying the rollout is based on what you've already invested. What are you already have accessible, right? Yeah, and if you have your IRA, you have. part of your IRA topped up in stocks and mutual funds that you have to, you know, break the uh, term on them, then that could be there could be a, a penalty within your IRA to do that. But I try to keep most of it liquid and very conservative. You know, that's just my theory. Wait a second. You just touched on something interesting. You're saying an IRA can be a mixture of mutual funds, cash. What else? I thought it was just all cash. No, no, not at all. What? What? I, I, this is the best way I was taught it, and I think it's really cool. To, and you'll get the understand. An IRA or a four hundred and one k is an umbrella. Think of it as an umbrella, and under that umbrella, you have different investment vehicles, from mutual funds to treasury notes to certificate of deposits to you know savings account, liquid accounts, money market accounts. So you can invest in all those different things. And especially with a company, they'll come at you. They'll tell you, they'll try to direct you more to invest in this type of fund that they have an affiliation with. Or, you know, you can sit with a broker and buy these types of stocks. But my general feel, and I'm not a licensed broker in any way, but just over the years, I believe, especially if your company offers a matching program, and that program, matching program is above 6%, 7%, you're outperforming Wall Street on average. So why take on the risk? Just let it build up slowly over time and just do very conservative investments. I don't believe you need to take on risk and buy stocks and buy this and that to try to hit the jackpot. I just believe in slow, steady growth. That's my outlook. People may think people may against it, but I believe I'm getting a six. And some companies match 100% finance, um, 100% um, matching programs or 50% matching okay. programs. I'm not greedy. Do I need more than a 50% return on my investment? No, I think that's fantastic. So don't right. take any more additional risk to get another 2 3% where you could wind up losing. Right. Well, you've never been a... You're, I would definitely say you're not a big market fan, but I get what you're saying. Right, right. So and, Matching just puts you up as you go. If they're matching, that's free money and it's doubling what you have. So you're up, you're up by 50% out of the gate. And I do need to mention the Roth IRA because it's an it's the same like an IRA and it's an individual retirement plan that bears many similarities to the traditional IRA. But the big difference is the contributions are not tax deductible and qualified distributions are tax free. So meaning you're not taking the tax deduct tax deduction when you put the money in up front, but when you take the money out is when you're getting it out tax free. And people seem to oh, okay. to like that better because they'd rather make sure when they retire that it's tax-free money and they don't have to worry about paying taxes on it. And it's all their money. And it's all theirs, correct. So you're saying, just to be clear for everyone at home, in an IRA, when you take that out, they're going to hit you with some taxes? Right, and that's a misconception that people have. And who knows what the tax rate will be 20, 30 years from now. They could be saying right now the tax rate to pull out from an IRA is 10%. And I hope the U.S. government doesn't get upset about this, but hey, we could be going through World War V. There could be, you know, gas prices could be out the wazoo. And what that cause and effect could mean that the government has to charge more taxes. And and they may use it in a way of of taxing a higher tax rate when you're ready to take out your retirement. People don't understand. Tax deferred does not mean (laughs) tax-free. Tax right. deferred. I mean, it's deferred right. down the road. And we don't know what the given tax rate will be at the time we're ready to take out this money. But you can also go to see your Social Security report and get a sense of how much money you have there, right? Yeah, I think your Social Security, you get a statement, I think, once a year or so. And I know at four, your 401k or your IRA, you can get that at any given time to see what your current balance is. Right. All right, Sarah, hopefully we've answered your question. And as Sean has laid out, there are definitely some options. There's the IRA, there's the 401k. The IRA breaks down into a Roth option as well that you consider. You could consider. And then also, remember, you can go online and pull your own Social Security report to see exactly how much money you have on the books. And for everybody else, keep emailing us your questions to two black guys, good credit at financiallyclean.com. And we will try to answer as many questions as we can throughout our podcast. So, Sean, we've talked a lot about 401ks and IRAs and matching programs that come out of jobs. But what about if you're someone that, you you know, just due to 
situations, you lost your job. What are the options there? What are some other things they could consider? Well, this is my expertise, Arlington. When we have to, where I have to create something out of nothing, right? And we have to hustle this situation. So there's many things you can look at that you may have. You, for example, let's talk briefly about life insurance because I think that's a show in itself. But just to give you an idea of life insurance, there's basically two types of life insurance that you can have. There's term life insurance, which some people call renting the insurance, and there's whole life insurance, which some people call owning the insurance, okay? So with term renting insurance, basically that means you have people assigned as beneficiaries if something were to happen to you, if you were to die, and they would just get a, a flat sum. In that case, as far as retirement, there's no advantage to you. You can't use it in any, in any way, Right. But there is whole life insurance if you do have that, which can be which accumulates equity along the way. And when you get to a certain age, you're you're allowed to pull out the equity and use it to your advantage. Now, do I recommend whole versus term in a sense? Not really, because with whole insurance, yes, you'll have you'll you accumulate equity. But what the ha- thing is, they are investing for you on your behalf without you having no say in the matter. Mm-hmm. They're putting it in different types of investment vehicles that you may not even understand. And at the end of the day, they're going to tell you what your rate will be. And then the undetermining factor is fees, 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 fees that you may not realize could take a big pinch of what you've earned along the way. So my suggestion comes back to, once again, taking control of your own destiny. It's get the term insurance to protect your your, your loved ones. And then the savings, because there's huge savings. I mean, life insurance term can be like from like little as $100 a year, while whole insurance can be $300 a month, right? So it's a big, it's a big difference in price. So, but use that money that you would have had to spend to get whole insurance to put aside and save for your own, you know, for your own retirement and invest it in things that, you know, can produce favorable results for you. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So life insurance is another possibility. And I know this one, I'm just lobbing it across the plate because I know you see owning a home as a very viable option down the road as a retirement plan. Right. Of course. Um, yeah. And, you know, we can talk, I'm going to talk about my favorite part, but there's a part that I had to even research myself to find out more about it, which everybody, which people talk about is reverse mortgages. Right. Um, right. and reverse mortgages. Exactly. I see the commercials as well. And for those that don't know, it's allow you to pull equity out of your home after 62. You cannot have an existing mortgage and a reverse mortgage and a reverse mortgage simultaneously, but you can pay off your existing mortgage with the reverse mortgage and payment for the mortgage is due when you vacate your primary residence or when you die, basically. Well, you're going to have to break that down a little bit. I can have a mortgage. Let's say I have a mortgage. I'm 65. I have 25000 left on my mortgage. I can take out a reverse mortgage of, let's say, a hundred grand and pay off the twenty five grand so that my reverse mortgage is now seventy five thousand. No, your reverse mortgage would be a hundred thousand, but you have seventy five thousand dollars now available. in equity available for you, and then they can amortize it out over a monthly basis. So every month out of that seventy five thousand, they give you a part of it. Dollars. Yeah, as your income. They send you a check. They send you a check. So that's your income coming in. So you know every month I'm going to get X amount of money. Right. So, Dion, what does the average person need in order to retire comfortably? How much money? Arlington, $1 million, according to CNBC. That always startles me, that fact. I can't believe it, but I guess it's true. That, that, that fact always startles me. Yeah, for sure. If you do the math, it makes sense. It definitely makes sense. And we're living longer. So getting back into... But listen to this. Listen to this. Quick story. I just went to breakfast with a, with my friend's father, who is an engineer, worked for um, the United Nations, has over half a million dollars in savings. And you know how much he lives on a month? How much? 350 U.S. a month. Where? Okay. So he, he, he went to school. He was educated in the United States. His family is from South America, which is Guyana. So what he did during his working years is that he built himself a little cottage on his family land. Right. All right. Pays no taxes on it. Pays no rent. No nothing like that. And so his own. And he mm-hmm. doesn't drive a car. He pays taxi in, in Guyana, which is a dollar fifty a ride U.S. And his groceries cost him forty dollars a week. His most expensive, his most expensive bill is entertaining his young girlfriends. He said to me, <laughs> "quote unquote." <laughs> okay. So it, it it can be done, and he lives very comfortable, comfortably. Are you on, talking? Wait, are you comparing? The- a guy that lives in Guyana 
and he spends $350. You know what's funny about this scenario that you just created? My mother is from Guyana. And do you know in Guyana, $1 is less than one cent in the United States. It's point zero zero four. If you know you're limited in retirement funds, you can pick places outside of the United States that can give you a better cost of living and stretch your dollar. Even if you decide to spend four months out of the year, you know how much money you're saving by doing that? So okay. it's not something to laugh at. It's understanding too. Like when people retire, you can look at it on the opposite end too. Some people already have plans. Like when I retire, I want to move to Barbados, whatever the case may be. Okay. And they're not taking advantage. Ex- they're not taking into consideration the exchange rates. Like the Canadian dollar, us being from Canada, has dropped big time over the year. Right. And I, I have rental properties in, in the Caribbean. And the number one concern Canadians have when they're looking to rent for me is that can I give them a better rate because of the, the weak dollar? Right. So if you've planned your whole life to retire in some exotic place and then you didn't take in consideration exchange rates, that could wipe out 30% of your retirement fund, meaning that yeah. your, your retirement fund is worth 30% less than what you thought it was would, would be worth. And that could change your whole outlook and plan. So you have to take in consideration exchange rates and make them work in your favor. You know, my friend's father, he's, yeah, he's very conservative, but I commend him because he's, he's a U.S. citizen. And, and he still spends his summers in, in the United States. But right. in the winter, he's like, Sean, I spend $350 a month to live. <laughs> Why yeah. not? And I, my lifestyle is great. Right. You know, again, and, he, and you know, another thing, he says he can afford to hire a maid, but he chooses not to because he looks at the cleaning as exercise for him. Once again, it's the, it's the decision between the umbrella in your cocktail or a flat Coca-Cola. I totally get <laughs> <laughs> totally it. Totally but the reality is, for most people to maintain the lifestyle that they lead as a middle, upper middle class person, you're living about five to seven thousand a month. Five In to America. seven thousand. And if you stretch that over ten to fifteen years, you better start putting that money aside right now. And or coming up with a plan. Coming up with a plan, Arlington. One of the ways, you know, I love real estate. One of the things that, I, that I've that i told you is that there's huge, with this whole Airbnb and VRBO movement, right. it's created huge opportunities for people. Like, you have so much control now. Like, if you were to buy a property outside of the United States or outside of the city you're living in, right. your control is limited. You'd have to hire a property manager. They'd have to check guests in, tell you how well you're doing, collect monies and all that kind of stuff. These pr- companies now... They put everything in the power of your phone. And with PayPal and whatnot, you, people like I, my properties in Barbados, I Airbnb, and the transactions are all done through PayPal. I just have a clean lady that comes in and cleans, and that's it. And, you know, the great win about this is like, okay, the property that I have down there, the tenants that rent it pay towards my mortgage, right? right? So the plan is 20 years down the road, all that money will pay off my mortgage. And then when, I, when I'm ready to retire, I have two options. My two options is I can go to Barbados and live in a house paid off in full, or I could sell that property in the market then and use all that money as my retirement money and choose to live and do whatever I want to do, you know, and this is taking control of my own, my own debt. And that could be my quote unquote retirement paid for by tenants. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think Airbnb is a great option if you have. It's funny that we're talking about this because just today I was talking to a friend about the whole idea of, you know, now that you're in your mid 40s, it's a great opportunity. It's a great time to look around and start planning for the future and not wait till you're 65. And I was telling him, you know, you should look at prospective places that maybe there's a place you might want to live where the cost of living is cheaper. You could buy a property there now. And over the next few years, pay it off. And eventually, when you're ready, you can move to a home that's already paid off. But he, like a lot of other Americans, a lot of other people in this country, rather, not just Americans, but a lot of people in this country, he was like, I just don't have the money to put down on a secondary residence. I am caught in the struggle of paying off my primary residence. And I think that's why you have things like President Obama is suggesting this Myra where it's the idea of creating a th- some type of retirement savings bond so that Americans can save more, get a better return with limited risk. Because we have to figure out how to get more money saved for the future. And it's obvious that the job market isn't going to provide it. Well, I'll tell you this. 
you know, there's three forms of thinking that I, I have, that I think people have. There's backwards thinking, there's current thinking, and there's forward thinking. Right. You have to have forward thinking. You have to think forward and move and do predicting and predict certain events that are going to happen and plan accordingly. We can make all the excuses in the world, why not? You know, and in my story is a whole story that can take a show in itself to, to get to the point. I didn't win a lottery. I didn't, I didn't fall into money. But I did things strategically and tried to make them work for me. So everybody's situation is different, but we, you can plan accordingly and work out a snare that puts retirement in your control so that when 65 comes along, you have the option of what you want to do. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. And with that, I'm going to say forward into the bottom line. Yes. I'm into and if Airbnb thinking. is listening to this podcast, please send us a donation or a, 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 a sponsor. We just bigged you up in a big way. So Airbnb people, you better send a check our way for my retirement. <laughs> so today I'm giving you my bottom line. And the bottom line is if the government is telling you something may not be around, I don't suggest you wait to find out. It's time to make your own plan, people. You need to make a decision on how and how many chestnuts you need to start stocking away for the future. Because the future is now. Forward thinking on to Sean Linda for the takeaway. My takeaway is that passion has been something that people think is only for the young. I believe passion has no age. And when heading into your senior years, find your passion and pursue it. Retirement should be looked as a lifestyle shift, but not looked as doing nothing in time, not nothing time in your life. Lastly, during your younger years, take control of your own destiny and plan carefully for your senior years. That's it. Well, there you have it. Hopefully we've shed some light on the subject today, retirement at 65. But it's clear that for Sean and I, it is fiction. Fiction. Well, please remember to email your questions to two black guys, good credit at financially clean.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Two Black Guys Good Credit. And I'm Arlington, and I'm out. I'm Sean. I'm out of here. And I'm Dion, the girl with the facts. See you next week.